Hola, you are listening to Half Drunk and Curious with myself, Exerbia, and Pai, aka Pika. Say hello, Pika. Hello. This is the first episode. Basically, we're going to get a bit hammered and have a chat to people we think are interesting because we're not particularly interesting. Yeah, mostly we're interested in science, technology, arts, the future, and anything that tickles our pickle, really. So um, we recorded this episode a little while ago. Quite a bit has happened, especially in politics in the meantime, so keep that in mind while you're listening. This episode, we've been having a chat to Cody of the Alternate History Hub YouTube channel. We liked what he was doing. We are pretty sure you will, too. Go check him out. Bye! First of all, we just uh, we were watching some of your videos uh, today just to kind of refresh ourselves a bit. And uh, we're cu- kind of curious how really you got into all this to begin with, uh, because it's such a something I'd never heard of before, um, the whole alternate history genre. So, yeah, we're just a bit curious how you even got started with all this. Um, well, I've always been fascinated with, with history, like mostly military history, for one thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, as any teenage boy mostly was. Um, and... That kind of expanded into just the understanding nations and how societies interact and how um, battles and, and stuff change history. It got me fascinated about, well, what if different battles had gone differently? Like, how would that have affected society and, and the, the progress of uh, history? Yeah. So I started looking at uh, videos, you know, what if this had gone differently? What if this had gone differently? And this was uh-huh. four or five years ago. And I came across um, this genre called alternate history, and yeah. it was, just blew my mind because it was pretty much what I was always sort of theorizing in my head, but I didn't know there was this entire community of people that actually did that. So um, I never actually got introduced with alternate history through the novels or through the fiction because alternate history is a very big, um, you know, fictional genre. Mm. I got introduced through just this. Portuguese YouTube channel that <laughs> slides and every single alternate history scenario ended with global communism taking over the world for some reason and uh, this it was extremely biased I mean I, I loved the guy he was, he was a super nice guy but just everything had to end with socialism mm-hmm. maybe, maybe I, I, I would kind of wish somebody would make a a channel that could be realistic in some yeah, aspects. Right. So I thought, why, why, won't, why can't I just do that? Oh, awesome. So before you uh, started your channel, did you do some more research regarding uh, what other people were doing online? Or just that one guy, and then you thought, you know, hmm, maybe I can do something slightly different? Um, well, when I, when I started my channel, I was in senior year of high school. Mm-hmm. And uh, the only thing I really did mostly creative was draw a lot. So I wasn't really mm-hmm. that well-versed with YouTube videos or um, creativity or that much. Mm. So when I when I first started, it sort of emulated the style that was going on with YouTube, which was basically just PowerPoint presentations. Like yeah, right. back, they're just synced up with, with uh, epic orchestra soundtracks from Two Steps From Hell. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on it now, people just like, this is Cody from Alternate History? I was like... <laughs> Well, we yeah, it's a bit of a bit of an embarrassing admission, but um, we 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 did we did to begin with. We were like, oh, I wonder what uh, you know, because it's interesting to go back a few years because it's like a time machine. You can go back through, especially if someone's been on a while. Like I think the your earliest stuff was in 2012, and uh, we we were thinking, yeah, well, if, you know, if we want to find out what he's all about, we should check out his early stuff as well. And um, yeah, it was still good, but you, you know, you you see someone has come on like a real creative journey. Like a lot has changed, and you know, you, you do a lot of stuff artistically, very differently and whatnot. So it's uh, that's always quite interesting to to yeah. see as well. Your first video that you can see on your YouTube channel now uh, is that actually your first, or did you do some test videos before? And did you, or the first videos you deleted them after, and then made your first real introduction video? Yeah, that was that was my uh, my first actual video. Okay. I- recorded that in just one tank <laughs> yeah right it's playing there was a bunch of ums and it was pretty just and you know my voice was screaming i think my voice like dropped within the last two years or something because it i sound like an entirely <laughs> person for we me. were we were again again we would never brought it up with I, you know everyone has these little um these interesting changes creatively when you're on there for long enough but yeah we we're definitely like whoa like now you sound like a, a genuine uh like radio presenter like literally you could get away with being on the radio but mm-hmm. when, when, we, when we watched a few of those you know uh, over breakfast or something and then we, we went back and we we're like wow 
yeah, this this really changed in a few years. Like this was crazy. Like yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I sound like a twelve year old, but um, <laughs> not, <laughs> not at all. No. <laughs> what happened was uh, just through you know the gradual evolution. Um, yeah. I, I realized, you know, I kind of need to differentiate myself from everyone else. You know, if I need to, yeah, right. but the only reason I, I was even different was I named my channel Alternate History Hub, which was pretty, <laughs> pretty obnoxious back then. <laughs> I had like 50 subscribers, but um, I, you know, eventually it worked out. I mean, kind of. Yeah, I think I think you can get away with it because it's so niche. You know, if it was like Makeup Hub or something, then you know, a few people have got that in that uh, corner of the market. Uh, already sort of pretty locked down but I think with alternate history like I said to your channel was the first time I'd ever really come across this as an actual genre I'd just seen it in a few films and a few books I didn't realize this was a big thing which uh not to interrupt that was going to be my next question like yeah I, can you can you tell us a bit more about like how how massive this is I, we didn't even realize it was a genre before this was a thing a lot of people were doing um well like it's the, not an, an incredibly huge genre yeah. uh, compared to like science fiction and yeah sure stuff like that but it's um, it, it's kind of a level of, uh, of of just it's a very it's a very close community. I would say uh, a lot of the people that contribute to it aren't normally just pure alternate history writers. Like the very first ones were like Harry Turtle Dove, yeah, and right, Dick, and um, you know they've done they've done amazing work that wasn't alternate history, uh, obviously. So yeah, um, sure, yeah. It, just from just from those initial contributions, it sort of inspired other people to think of um, scenarios and, and worlds uh, that involved around around history. Mm-hmm. Um, initially, since it's, since it's a literary genre, the at first, the point of it wasn't to theorize purely about the nations and stuff. It was to set up the story and the characters. Yeah. And the conflict was affected from alternate history, but it wasn't like the main focus. Uh, the characters were the main focus. And so over the years, that kind of, you know, eventually changed to being um, a lot of people are fascinated about the just not really the human aspect, but yeah, the great nice. scheme of it. Right on. And I, I kind of like doing that. I like focusing on the whole lore aspect, you know, for lack of a better word, lore aspect mm-hmm. and the, the history of this entirely alternate timeline. Yeah, right on. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, I, I, um, one thing I was thinking when I was watching this stuff was, uh, yeah, first of all, that the, there aren't any recurring characters or something. It's purely like theoretical, and that's the that's the appeal of what you're doing in a way. Um, but but also, um, you'll know way more about this than I do. Uh, but the the sort of great man theory versus uh, you know trends, um, and uh, I, I, I only sorry, say again. I was I was agreeing. I was listening i said oh yeah oh yeah 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 um it's it's, uh, sometimes being a few thousand miles away can uh can be a bit tricky with communication but Mm. uh yeah um uh yeah this is something i only found out about a few months ago from do you know the the dan carlin uh hardcore history podcast yeah yeah like a a massive uh fan of this guy and um i'd never even thought of this before but i noticed that you uh like i can tell you it seems like you're trying to be as objective as possible because you don't obviously who would want to piss everyone off they're going to be history history buffs everywhere and if you if you come down on one side or the other like with your um you did a video on uh what if um atlantis uh, actually survived or existed essentially um and like there must be so many nuts on both sides who you're going to annoy i pissed off a lot of atlanteans with that one <laughs> a lot of atlanteans yeah right yeah have you actually have you done anything super controversial that people got annoyed about like i first discovered you from the um Oh, I think it's a I think it's a plane going overhead. But I first discovered you from the what if uh, World War Two, uh, what if the a- Axis one, basically, and I, I was amazed there wasn't more controversy about uh, about that. To be honest, like, have you done stuff that really really pissed people off, drove them crazy? I did a video about if the the South won the American Civil War. Oh song. yeah, right. I didn't I didn't actually see that, but I remember reading the title thinking, shit, that's going to be that's that's going to be a trigger. Like that was atrocious. Just so many people calling me like. A liberal cuck and all of this liberal just, cuck, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's like the worst, like a, like a northern, you know, I've, I've just a bunch of words that I'm not sure I can. Actually say. What, what's <laughs> the worst thing uh, someone online ha- has said to you? <laughs> Lip, liberal cuck is pretty good. So many great ones to think about. <laughs> I think somebody called me. A lot of people have called me like, uh, like a. No, I can't really. That that seems that's not really an insult. It's not. It's really like 
saying it, the name itself, like people just for some reason call me a Jew. Which <laughs> right. <laughs> like, why? Because yeah, fuck it, why not? Yeah, for sure. Great. Yeah. No, it kind of offends me. Yeah. The fact that that is like an that's, that's supposed to be offensive. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the, I got that a lot from the Nazi video. But, oh, um, what? Well, like you're you're a, you're a Jew apologist or something? Is that why? Like you're like they're saying like oh like you don't know the true history or Whoa. you're um you know just buying into white genocide and all this fun stuff it's and- funny you just uh, you remind me for a second that this is like some maybe a little controversial for the first ever podcast let's just let's just run it into the ground while we can yeah take that podcast but <laughs> but um i was gonna say so there's this thing in like just for reference uh, everyone else yeah i live in bulgaria um that's where we are at the moment and uh there's this slightly weird undertone um every now and then even among really liberal people of this like Jewish conspiracy thing, and uh, it it but it, it will only come out of, after meeting someone, deciding they're really cool, deciding that they have no like underlying character flaws, and then suddenly it will just like come out that they think there's you know some. But by that point, you've already been talking to them for three hours, so you've decided you like them, and by then it's kind of too late, and it's very confusing. So. Yeah, I see this over the net sometimes. I don't know what to make of this. This is quite weird. But obviously, I guess Jew is an insult in their minds when they call it to you, I suppose. But yeah, that was pretty weird. I have that a lot in, in America. Oh, um, really? Uh, at least where I am. Where are you from, Cody? Uh, Why? Well, if, uh, if, 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 oh, what uh, area? People are saying, yeah, whereabouts if you want to be explicit. I mean, you don't have to. Oh, I'm, I'm, from, uh, I'm, I'm from Ohio. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm not like too far away from the city, but I'm, I'm at least out by the country. Yeah, yeah. And, if um like people are super nice and everything but sometimes you can be talking to somebody for a few hours or, or so and then they just let it slip that um you know it's, it's the blacks are doing something yeah or exactly yeah those, like, mexicans are trying to take over the country or whatever it's just it just it slips it's it's interesting how, yeah. how normal people can sometimes have these views but um yeah i was on a years ago i was on a plane to new zealand and um I, yeah i was i have a bit of a thing uh, with flying, like I don't like it that much. And there was a, a very old woman next to me who was just, you know, talking to me. And uh, you know, it's a nice distraction. And we, you must have been talking for like twelve hours. It's a long flight. She seemed the sweetest, you know, most lovely woman in the in the world. And when we were just about to land, I said, "So, you know, where would you recommend going? You know, you know where I'm going, the cities and stuff." She was like, "Ah, maybe Nelson, but uh, there's a lot of blacks there. I'd avoid it." And it was just like the ultimate sort of <laughs> anti cherry on top of that, like. That case. it was just terrible she seems so lovely it's, you know, it's that occasional little like you know fun playful racism at the end just to yeah just to just to mix things up yeah lovely yeah my my, uh, my girlfriend's grandma she is uh she's puerto rican like she mm-hmm. can barely barely really speak english that much oh yeah but um they live they live in kind of the inner city a little bit and uh the house across the street was it was getting sold, and a new family moved in. And it just happened to be a, a black family, you know, just a nice, a, a nice, typical, you know, family. Uh, and the grand, her, my her grandma, she's like the sweetest, like old lady in the world. She can barely remember where she is half the time, but she just innocently as possible, just pointed at them and said, "Look, the blacks." Wow. And, wow. and we all just. Kind of, we're like, okay, let's shuffle her inside. Yeah, yeah. She sees, and that was before this escalates. Yeah, right. Top for first time podcast. This is good. This is good. I'm yeah, right for sure. Well, like like I said, I mean, we call this half drunk and curious. We're, we're quite explicit about, um, yeah, just trying to be honest, really. But yeah, for sure. But that that's that's some intense shit. Uh, yeah, old people racism. It's kind of excusable. It's like a fun little throwback to a to a simpler time but uh yeah that's why i can't wait to get old and uh well you have to wonder um with the the values we have now uh i wonder what kind of uh stuff we believe right now that's going to be ridiculously conservative uh, in, the in yeah in yeah. like 50 years that we're going to come out with completely unthinkingly and our grandkids are going to be like jesus christ like can you not like can you well, not maybe Cody has an idea for uh, our future what's uh, what's going to happen <laughs> yeah right what with yeah. culture you mean but yeah yeah i just uh, i wonder we must be uh for example, like you know, most of the internet is quite, yeah. You know, regardless of opinions or whatever, we're we're pretty like anti, um, uh, not like progressive, but you know, like anti sort of uh, the social justice warrior stuff and whatnot. Like, I wonder if that's going to be the correctness and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And I wonder if that's going to be like the if if it goes one way or the other, depending. Um, if that's going to be the taboo that we come out with when we're grandparents or whatever, or uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's, it's hard Maybe, to. Like, oh, uh, depending on the progress of of robotics and uh, oh yeah. 
yeah, with that, maybe eventually people are like, you know, artificial intelligence isn't <laughs> real life. Or oh, right on. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. But it's, I, that's science. You, you shouldn't be sleeping with machines. Yeah, well, this this is what I was. This is what I want to. Um, Don't hate robots. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, some people are already uh, sleeping with machines, you know, well, vibrators like VR, and stuff. Mean, oh, yeah, well, I guess yeah. we, yeah, vibrator is a little yeah, different that, to it. I've known some men who are pretty uh, offended when uh, girlfriends or anything had a vibrator. Well, they feel, like, inadequate about it. Yeah. Well, can you imagine how bad it's going to be when it's, like, a really convincing, like, six-pack robot Hulk? Like, that's going to really... Yeah, be... well, or a female. I get, uh, there are already women online, well, uh, and men also, but more yeah. women who are uh, completely anti-female uh, robots, how uh, do you call them? The Fembots? Bots. Fembots, yeah. Fembots, yeah. Sex yeah. bots. But, Sex but yeah, th this is what I was going to ask you with um, with what you're doing. My, my like, little uh, uh, sort of pet thing to rant on about is, like, transhumanism and the singularity and all this stuff, you know, like... Uh, uh, the future kind of taking off hopefully in our lifetimes a bit so um yeah i was gonna like alternate history is like perfect for this because uh, i don't know if you played um beyond earth this civilization game i've played every civilization except <laughs> beyond earth it's just it's never it didn't appeal to me for some reason yeah i um i was a big fan as well and i was so excited for the idea of beyond earth but it just i don't know it didn't tickle me for some reason but uh it, it did have this idea where you could kind of go down different tech routes like the same with normal civ but you could go down different types of tech. So the, um, I was, yeah, I've been waiting for like weeks to ask you about how you thought, like if, if, uh, you know, if we, if we go the kind of genetic route, if genetic technology, uh, genetic engineering really takes off and instead that's how we, we really start defining culture, like uh, modifying embryos or, or, uh, improving ourselves that way. Or, you know, you go down the more sort of techie route, like nanotechnology or AI or something like this. Uh, is this, is this stuff you've been thinking about much? Like sort of nerds wet dream. Yeah, I actually have, um, I mean, I'm def I'm certainly no expert, so you know. No, no it's okay. Not at all. But I've always kind of assumed that it's going to be sort of a mix of that. Yeah. Um, the you know introduction introduction of like cybernetics and mm -hmm. uh, artificial implants and stuff that we already are yeah. kind of seeing today. Definitely. That's going to take off in the future. Like that's mm -hmm. definitely going to. And um, I mean that. I mean that's great. You know, yeah. that's yeah. not a a bad thing. It's just people are going to eventually implement more technology into their bodies because, mm -hmm. you know, that's how it'll become more of a medical thing than sort of an improvement thing. Mm -hmm. Genetics, though, I'm I'm not very sure about that. That seems a bit um, – you have a fine line between eugenics and manipulating genetics, um, sort of like Gattaca, you know, stuff like that. that that's still – I saw that a few uh... – uh, a few weeks ago that film still holds up like brilliantly today in fact like with everything we're worrying about about genetics particularly like yeah for sure so it's i mean that itself i think would be a controversy of manipulating dna and manipulating embryos and stuff and yeah. even already i mean i i know a lot of um deeply religious religious people and the idea of um changing dna of adding cybernetics to the body that <laughs> is an extremely like big issue to them for some like now even and so i think when we're talking about stuff like in the future that will be a controversy i think that will be an immense big it, issue like game or abortion it'll be cybernetics or introduction. yeah definitely but i i was just thinking when you were saying it, like we always imagine it was going to be some massive catastrophe like if you you know games like deus ex and a lot of sci-fi they always make out that these things are going to be kind of life-shattering controversies but I can't imagine it's going to be too much bigger than, um, for example, like when the uh, contraceptive pill came around in the 60s, uh, you know, the, the Catholic Church, is, they're like, you know, mega rich, mega powerful. They've had to deal with this stuff before. So I imagine it would just be the same kind of, but the, 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 the one, sorry, actually gone. So you know, you weren't, you weren't talking about that. Oh, sorry. I, I'm, I'm not actually talking about like end of the world sort of. Oh yeah, for sure. An equivalent to the gay marriage abortion debate that's oh, happening. Yeah, America, right. Right? basically yeah it's, it's it's fun to think that you'll get protesters uh, about this instead of like um you know like uh, keep uh, keep bodies purely biological uh keep keep minds purely uh um neurochemical you know this kind of stuff but uh, i was also going to say like it's um it's going to be an interesting uh if if ai does go down the, this is what i spend a lot of my time uh, thinking about um and trying to resist uh, making videos about if ai does go down the route of being becoming more and more conscious you know with the lines being blurred uh, that's that's going to raise some serious issues with like the afterlife, with uh, how how churches, re especially like religiously, how they respond to this, uh, whether they're heretics or whatever, especially when they seem human as well, you know. Yeah, or just the the idea of like what is life, or does it mean to be a human or have a soul, and like 
if you have a machine that, that thinks it's, you know, alive, and in mm-hmm. most aspects it is, except for biological, like, that is a huge amount of, like, moral issue. Like, you know, that will raise a lot of questions. Oh, yeah. In the far future, at least. Well, same as uh, I always think if um, if bre- uh, this this kind of, again, nerd's wet dream, the rapture of the nerds, if, if brain scanning uh, really takes off, um, and you're able somehow, um, if it's possible, uh, to digitize uh, human consciousness and to, to run it on a machine platform, at least so it seems convincing, like a convincing copy of the person. That, that really does leave like big questions about, well, where is the soul then? Like where, if, you can, if you can faithfully copy someone's identity onto a machine, then where the hell is the, the bit that's been you know, hanging around for 3,000 years that we've believed in religiously you know, the whole time? Like it's, that, I'd, I'd really like to see what, not, you know, regardless of uh, you know, being an atheist or not, or agnostic or whatever, it'll be interesting to see how religions like, respond to that. That would be quite bizarre. Oh yeah, just the whole. It's <laughs> yeah. going to be fascinating with social issues that yeah, are just going to affect sure. our generation. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Talking about religion, what do you actually believe, <laughs> but, Cody? It's, uh, well, again, it's soul, soul wise and stuff. Well, if, yeah, if he wants to be explicit, I mean, that's, yeah, uh, that's you don't have to, but well, I'm I'm actually I'm a Christian. Mm-hmm. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, so I'm a Christian. I believe in uh, the soul and stuff like that. Mm. But mm. I, I'm pretty I'm pretty you know laid back, so yeah, I don't yeah. really judge yeah. other people by their by their beliefs pretty much but yeah so I, I i like i think i like to think of the idea of that there's a soul and stuff i mean for me that that's pretty comforting yeah definitely and i have i don't know if there's an afterlife i you know i don't know mm. but mm. i choose to believe that there is and you know yeah i right don't No, that's not like we're not taking that as the elephant in the room or anything at all yeah just uh purely like curious but um I don't know. It's like a. I, I imagine um, if if uh, you were religious, uh, if one is religious, um, I'm I'm not. So I don't, yeah, I'm pretty agnostic as far as it goes. But I imagine it would be something that you more and more like it becomes something that you probably don't want to admit too public. Like you know, you more and more reluctant to admit publicly. It's like you know, time goes on, or whatever. Like people sort of getting more volatile. Like I was personally one of these like dickhead. Uh, uh, you know, like a- a angry atheist when I was a teenager or whatever, and it sort of sort of hit like my twenties. I was like, ah, maybe I need to stop being a douche. Like, maybe, uh, maybe I don't actually know. Like, maybe, maybe this seems a bit unpleasant. Exactly. But, I was actually um, like that too. I'm not, uh, not joking. I, uh, I used to be um, an, a pretty hardcore atheist, and then I became an agnostic. And oh I just, wow! I came, kind of came back. Um, so you were raised as a Christian, and then went to the route the believing in other stuff, and then you came back from it. Uh. Kind of, mm-hmm. sort of. Um, the, my my family never really had that much of a connection to like religion and stuff. At least like my mom and dad, mm-hmm. but my, my parents did. Like my my grandparents did. They were extreme extreme Baptists, Whoa. and yeah, just like basically evangelicals, like ex- like the most stereotypical evangelicals you can think of. And so all their views were pretty messed up. <laughs> their way of dealing with other people with those issues were very messed up not very christian like at all and so that kind of that kind of scared me away <laughs> yeah, from right. christian because for like most of my life that's what i imagined it being um but as i you know i, I eventually went to, uh became an atheist and then as i stopped talking to my grandparents and kind of travel you know travel a little bit went to college and ironically i actually became went back to religion when going to college for some reason yeah that's that's a really uh that's really like cool and sort of unexpected uh, unexpected turn i think most people usually go the other way you know yeah it, it, i mean college is certainly a, a liberal and it's a liberal yeah. environment not that that's bad or anything yeah it's it's, it's not typically the story you hear when yeah you're right like, even scared you yeah for sure but yeah that's going back to your your first question about mm-hmm. how people of how i how i deal with it and stuff yeah mm-hmm. um in america it's not taboo at all yeah right we've probably got a bit of a european like uh, being british and dutch like this is like a bit more of a taboo over here i expect yeah yeah it's not really a taboo at all it, it's in fact more taboo to be um agnostic well actually it's a generational thing it's weird Whoa. if you are um if you talk to more of the, the baby boomers and stuff and uh say that you're an atheist or agnostic they will get extremely offended whoa yeah oh yeah they get extremely offended and say the worst things and baby boomers are an interesting <laughs> bunch but yes, um, to be honest they're, they're kind of dicks they're kind of dicks back home for us as well but just in a different way but yeah <laughs> so when you get closer to like young people um young people really don't care so you can uh, when when you say that you're a christian 
and you talk to a, a, a young atheist, really, it's it's not really like a big deal anymore. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of um, you know I live my life, you live yours, sort of way. So mm-hmm. as long as you don't try to like yell at it, like try to debate people, like most people really don't debate in real life in America. <laughs> it's mostly through the internet, and that's where the shit gets really bad. But if you talk to people about religion in um, at least where I am in, in real life, people will be mostly pleasant about it and not really try to be too controversial. Is, is that partly like an Ohio thing or is that like also a kind of US thing? Because like neither of us have much experience with the US and I don't know about you, no, Pika, but I, I was thinking about like how like that sounds almost completely opposite to, to the experience in Europe or the UK at least. So is that is that partly like geographical where you are or do you think that's like a US wide thing? Um, I, I mean, the U.S. is huge. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's, uh, at least where where I am in uh, sort of in the Midwest, in kind of a, a pretty you know suburban area of the of the U.S. Religion is not really talked about that much in terms of uh, trying to convert people or debate people and stuff, and it's a lot more okay. open. So it's kind of it's kind of weird. It's like you you basically you can you can vocalize it, and as long as you're not, you know, saying that other people are going to go to hell, um, a lot of people just kind of have a, a live and let live lifestyle. Yeah, right. Kind of like that. So yeah, if that yeah. that's that's kind of how it is. So Christianity is it's not taboo. Religion having a religion isn't taboo, mm. and not having a religion at least with young people isn't taboo. Wow, yeah, <laughs> that's that's awesome. That's that's kind of like a nice. It's like a nice in between, I suppose. Like that's that's better than this. But I, I don't know. I just assumed because of the, um, uh, at least while I've been on the net, you know, I'm only in my late twenties. But for as long as I've been on the net, I've noticed there's been like a really big reduction in how honest people are about being religious, uh, where they don't want to admit it or whatever. Where like th- this whole new atheist thing has really got big and whatnot. And I always assumed that was kind of like just sweeping across the U.S., uh, especially like um, a lot of younger uh, Americans and whatnot seem like way more. Uh, atheistic than than they ever have been, and it's certainly the same in the UK, like our generation and stuff. So, yeah, it's interesting to hear that's still like alive and well. I guess. Yeah, well, a lot of a lot of um, of my generation is definitely turning away from religion and yeah, stuff. Right. But I don't think it's in the sort of the same amount as as Europe. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't really know what's behind that. To be honest, I don't know why. It, like when I first noticed it, it was sort of people like you know Richard Dawkins and this kind of like big. That's where I kind of jumped on the on the and um, on the bus i want to say the bandwagon but the bus sounds a bit a bit cooler but uh yeah the, i don't know if it's just some people got really uh vocal about it or like it was a sort of nationwide or like continent wide thing in it, it, it entire like a lot in in a lot of rural areas if um people are religious they are extremely religious mm-hmm. so it it kind of lifts the whole nation up as a whole as sort of a lot more you know, conservative than, than Europe. This, it's kind of always been that way a little yeah. bit. Um, America's always kind of joked about how Europe were sort of not to be, not to offend you guys. Right? <laughs> what, what is this? How dare you? A bunch of pansies or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, sure. So it's, um, we kind of are in a lot of respects, but America likes to differentiate itself from everyone else. And in some aspects that tends to be, be more conservative and be more religious yeah, because yeah. everyone else is basically wrong except for us Americans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to to be honest, I think when you've got a few like moon landings under your belt, I think you you, mm. you know you've kind of got the right to to be a bit full of yourself. I think at that point you can kind of you know you're kind of Johnny Big Balls. I think it's acceptable to start boasting a bit. You know, how but, do you how do you think religion is going to? Hey, I was going to ask the same develop thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. with the, with the alter- like alternate history angle with this, like. Yeah, generally, like with and, and the world as well. Like generally, mm-hmm. if, if religion sort of slowly seems to be waning at the moment, you know. I think that um, in most area, in most areas of the U.S., it's pretty much going to disappear. Mm-hmm. Honestly, um, it it's kind of it's a trend. You know, we can because you even pointed it out how more young people are basically just getting rid of religion and not really having it affect their lives. Yeah. So I think it's the old generation basically dies out. It's it's going to, you know, disappear. But in areas of the US like the deep Midwest, the deep south, um mm. Texas, uh where, you know, religion is still very prominent, it's going to hold on and it's going to hold on hard. So basically <laughs> gonna, it, yeah, it's it's pretty much going to have 
I think, um, just sort of enclaves of, you know, deep, fervent religious belief surrounded by a, a sea of agnosticism. Nice. So, so, so it's just going to get even more, like, kind of contentious, I guess, to be... To be real, did, like the line will be even more clearly defined. I guess that's that's going to be interesting. Yeah, because there's already there's always already pretty a, a a big mentality of an us versus them. Yeah. Well, what do you mean like religiously, generally? No. Yeah, uh, I even sort of have that mentality a little bit. Yeah. Bit more of it kind of a lot of people, at least where I am, sort of see the world against them, and I that's always been kind of an American thing, not even a religious thing. Yeah. But that I I think as more people, you know, as there are more of them, of more people, uh, that idea will kind of become more rooted, and people will be more rooted in their sort of religious and conservative beliefs. Kind of. <laughs> Whoa! So it just gets it just gets kind of even more conservative as a result of kind of uh, as a result of dwindling a bit. As uh... hey, that, that's the reason why why Trump is rising so much. I mean, well, I don't yeah, that. right. But there's this reactionary culture of um, against you know PC or against liberals or against uh, you know for people's minds socialism. Well, you know everything ends in socialism, so uh, just get over it, Cody. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> So when it, when it comes to Hillary and uh, Clinton and uh, Donald Trump, where do you think? Um, well, where is the world going to go? Where if uh, well, you know, I mean, Trump is going like to win? Either or, or yeah. What, yeah. What kind of happens? In the, yeah. Sort of. <laughs> where do you see it going with with either of them winning? I guess. Yeah. Um, well, I will just say for the record, I hate both of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think to be honest, I think most <laughs> most most people agree with you there. Like we we are not even in the country and we agree. Like the yeah, only thing I really liked about. Uh, the Clintons recently was the balloon meme about them where they were so happy about the balloons. I don't yeah, know if you've sure. seen that, Cody. That was pretty adorable. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder when I saw that if there was a marketing stunt they yeah. maybe came up with. It's even a bit contrived. Didn't yeah. It? yeah, definitely. But yeah, sorry, go on. I think once the debates come, those are going to be fun. When whenabouts do we get to look forward to those? Whenabouts those happen? Oh, I have no Roughly. idea. But when they do. Shouldn't, shouldn't, yeah, exactly. It shouldn't be too far off, I don't think. Like, uh, it's only like. Uh, Time flu, election mm-hmm. almost here. But um, yeah, right. It, this, I mean, I don't, I don't like the Clinton. I don't like Clintons. I don't like Trump. But when it has Trump's ideas versus like Hillary's kind of like a blank slate. Like she just kind of agrees with everyone, and you know, isn't that too controversial? Mixed with Trump, who. <laughs> Yeah. controversial every five seconds yeah but still but still kind of changes his mind about what like neither of them seem consistent it's just one is completely uh inconsistent with being with having no voice the other is completely inconsistent with saying wild and like salacious bullshit like it seems like that's the that's the only difference between them you know like yeah and it's it's funny um trump actually i don't know how how much you you pay attention to we, we, in in, uh, in europe we're all getting a little bit worried about this so we, we are watching quite closely in fact yeah indeed we were like oh shit okay so trump um, actually has uh, he's not even consistent with who he um endorses and who he doesn't he he actually endorsed he refused to endorse two candidates like a week ago and then immediately went back and endorsed them again <laughs> as everyone was in a tizzy about it and <laughs> He, he asked um, three times in an interview, why can't I nuke these people? Whoa, wow. Who, do, you know, do you know who he was specifically talking about? Like, um, I think he was talking about the Middle East. Nice. Uh, why can't I nuke these people? And it's also, why can't I? It's not, why can't we? Why can't I personally nuke these people? I want to press the, I want to press the button. Like, yeah, yeah, like, I, and uh, it, it's funny, his mentality with that. I think, I truly think that in his mind, what it means to be president is to sit in a nice chair and look presidential. <laughs> yeah, right. sure. He um so there's this uh politician called John Kasich. He's our governor. He's my governor. Oh, okay. And he's kind of like the last guy that really like stood up to Trump kind of. Like yeah. he's the last to drop, drop out of the race. And uh Trump I think respected that and he wanted a moderate as a VP. So Trump's campaign actually went to Kasich's office and suggested that Kasich run with Trump as a VP and Kasich said okay well what am I going to do yeah. and uh, the Trump camp t- pain said you're going to be in charge of foreign and domestic issues Kasich said well what's Trump going to be in charge of and I'm not even fucking joking Trump said Trump's son said making America great again yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, th- 
<laughs> the, I thought that was strange in that you would just offer the uh, foreign issues to someone that that sort of uh, hastily. But no, no, that's that. Jesus Christ! I truly think he actually has no idea how to be president. I don't think he actually has a plan to be president. I think he just wants the title, and that's it. I don't think he actually planned to be this far, and so he doesn't actually want to really lead. He just has. He just wants to have a bunch of other people lead. And he'll take the credit. That's why he hasn't really said any issues. He hasn't really said anything he's going to do because he, he really has no idea. He's just kind of <laughs> just speeches and getting a lot of praise and, hope, you know, he'll ride out four years and maybe everything will work out. So, so what if he, if he would win? How do you think, um, what would America look like well, in yeah, four we, years? Y you and I would. We were talking about this the other day when we, we first yeah, had, a, yeah. had a bit of a chat about, um, you know, we, we were talking about, like, the, for example, the immigration thing, where it's like if he actually gets in, you know, like. I want to hear a nice doom scenario. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to hear what's nuclear, the worst nuclear weapons thing? You, yeah. What's yeah, the right. worst thing you think will happen? I don't think he'll be able to do anything. <laughs> I actually don't. He's, he's so alienated from the Republican Party. He's so alienated from everyone else. I think that he will be a lame duck president because nobody will approve any legislation he does. He can't even the, – the wall plan he has will cost trillions of dollars, and every plan he has is so unrealistic. The only reason he's saying it is to appeal to the, xenobo, the xenophobic white masses who really don't pay attention to Washington politics. Yeah. So yeah. he's not going to do any of the stuff he's saying. Even if he really wants to, there's no way just because of how the U.S. checks and balances are with the Supreme Court and with, legis and with the, exec the legislative branch. They're not going to let him do anything. Well, I, I was going to specifically ask about this because we each country, I'm sure it's the same in the Netherlands, that like each country has its own system for politically um, one party tries to put something through and obviously the others can block it. Also in the UK, we, uh, you know, we're still in the dark ages. We have a queen and if you really want, she could potentially block bills. Uh, so yeah, with with the House, they can just block stuff. So for example, if he just decided that he wanted to push through some kind of bizarre war or, or for example, the, the immigration thing, okay, we're going to round them up in the night Uh, all the Mexicans uh, need, uh, you know, need to get out or whatever it is. Uh, how much power do the um, to, to the House or, or, or whoever it is essentially have to, to block stuff like that? What do they need to do? Basically, they just don't sign off on whatever plan he has because, you know, Washington bureaucracy is hell. I mean, it took <laughs> Obama forever to try to get Obamacare passed. Oh, through. yeah, right. And, yeah. and so having even something like that, this that doesn't mean that Trump isn't going to have any power. I mean, he's still head of state. He's still in charge of the armed forces. So putting him in that position is still very, very dangerous. Um, not world ending, but it certainly is going to hurt American prestige because he's going to be our representative, like meeting with the Queen of England, meeting with foreign dignitaries. Yeah, he's, 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 he's the face of America. Yeah, sure. Can, yeah, exactly. Can you imagine him with the Queen? That'd be perfect. He just, he just said, he just listed a bunch of like, nations that he thought were sponsors of terrorism and he said stuff like qatar saudi arabia iran the philippines 85 <laughs> catholic philippines yeah exactly like it's, it's unlikely yeah no. a, hot, a hotbed of, uh, of of jihad yeah for sure yeah of course yeah this he doesn't really have an, an idea of foreign policy or, or anything like that so that's going to just offend a bunch of people and piss off a, a lot Except for Russia. Yeah, I bet they love this one. It seems like he has some sort of relationship with Putin. Even if he oh, says really? he doesn't, he's, he's still extremely lenient on, on Russia. Like he said, um, he doesn't care that Russia invaded Crimea. He just he doesn't give a shit. He'll, he just allows it. So I think if he's president, he's not going to be tough on Russia at all. He's yeah, just going yeah. to let them basically do whatever they want. And... I mean, it's not like Russia is some, you know, evil power or anything. It's not like Russia is bad or Russia is not like terrible. Yeah, sure. But you can't let just a country go and do whatever they want. Yeah. Even if P -p -p like the, mo the more I learn about Putin, the more like absolutely terrified I am of him more than anyone else in the world because he, he almost has complete and utter authority. That's really the difference between him and I, I would say like he's from the more I learn about him. He, he does seem to be the most powerful man in the world because at least Obama is is kept in check, but Putin essentially isn't in, in almost any way whatsoever. Uh, openly killing people uh, in the street, journalists, stuff like this. Like he's, he's just the, the, very, the literal definition of, uh, well, almost the literal definition of a badass, essentially. So if you're, if you're, if you're politically in bed with him, as it sounds like uh, Trump is, that is, that is a, scary, a fairly scary prospect. 
Oh yeah, and a lot of people, a lot of people in America actually support Putin. What? Really? Really? Yeah, yeah. They 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 see a, a immense. So, uh, they they're they genuinely like the idea of Putin. They they think yeah, that he's no. Right? This is this is news to us. Huh? Wants for his country, and that um we need somebody like him in in office. I'm not even joking. Wow. Like that's a lie. A lot of people like to vote for Trump is because they basically want an American Putin, and that's what they think Trump is. And it, yeah, it's, it's it's scary. Is, is that like the the appeal of someone who's just like on the nose and like is really masculine or like riding bears or what's the like what's the appeal there? It's kind of like an an idea of that mixed with somebody that they think will just bypass the entire American checks and balances. <laughs> yeah, right. It just, yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of like supporting fascism, but only if. He's the fascist, pretty but, much. Yeah, and, and only if it's he, he's the fascist that they want, obviously, as long as he, as long as he does the right stuff. Because mm. yeah, all, all fascists do what you want them to do. You know? Yeah, and that's the weirdest mentality now that has developed within like the last five years. Is people don't really truly want compromise or democracy or anything like that. It, it has. They will be super happy with a dictator in power as long as that dictator does what they want, pretty much. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I I kind of I have that that same sentiment too though sometimes when i when i care enough about something politically if you if you really want it to change like for example there's a, a thing in the uk where um you know to put, put my cards down the table about this uh like where we i think you you guys are as well we're Pico and i were talking about this we're really uh, against euthanasia um so if if you're if you've got a terminally uh terminal condition um a lot of people are really against uh the right to die essentially so a doctor helping you out um, and th- sorry, go on. You meant the UK is against euthanasia, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, not, sound, not, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm obviously completely for this, but uh, um, but it's got ridiculous to the point to the point where <laughs> euthanasia. Exactly. Yes. I think we should just euthanize anyone who disagrees with me. Basically, <laughs> that's 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 how I think we should solve this. But I, uh, it's got ridiculous to the point where there are a lot of um, particularly Christians. No issue with Christians, but uh, a, a lot of the people blocking this are Christians because they have a. A fairly big issue with this and I, I did catch myself thinking a few years ago when this had just been battered about for like five six years and it's for the sake of people who are dying i did f- catch myself thinking oh crap yeah if we get someone in power who could just push this through like regardless of everyone else's opinion oh, do i really care about that and, yeah, and i imagine that's how all fascism starts you're like well let's just get someone in who's who just kicks everyone else's ass because uh, everyone else is just whining, you know. But. For, for someone like me from the Netherlands, uh, yeah. and we were very uh, um, running in front with, um, with legalizing, euthanasia. yeah, legalizing yeah. gay marriage, uh, euthanasia, and yeah. everything. It's very strange for me to hear that there are countries where stuff like this, um, you know, hasn't gone through. Yeah, and you, you guys are insanely like progressive and liberal, like to mm-hmm. the point where I, you can't even imagine like what like some some of the bizarre. Nothing wrong with conservatives, but same with you, like. Cody, like the, the conservative ideals where you just can't, I don't know, well, probably the same with liberal ideals, but just, yeah, where there's no consensus. Yeah, I mean, I used to be a, I used to be a liberal, so I at least uh, understand um, the, the mentality, uh, mm-hmm. at least. So I don't, um, I'm not, I'm not one of these, like, you know, raving rednecks that's like, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. the rules are destroying everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I try to at least think I, I look on both sides of the aisle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, what was I talking about? Back with back with uh, with Trump. Oh yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. The, I think what he's going to do, the most impact he's ever going to have, is on the Supreme Court. Oh right, yeah. For people that don't know, the way that the checks and balances work is that the executive branch can, uh, um, I forgot the word, uh, can enlist. Enlist now. This enlist isn't the good word. What, adjudicate? No, not adjudicate. Uh, the executive branch can appoint their oh, own right. yeah, sure. Supreme Court judges. That was the word. That's what I wanted. Yeah, yeah. And so um, the president's always the one that, that appoints a new judge. And uh, last year, our judge Scalia died from something. I think it was old age or maybe. I don't yeah, know. I say that, that sounds ominous. He died from something. Judge, and he died. And... Um, Whoever will win the presidency will basically appoint their yeah. own judge in their ideology. So if Clinton wins, she's going to appoint a liberal judge. And if Trump wins, he's going to appoint an extremely conservative judge. Mm-hmm. And these judges are going to last for the next like 30 years. They're going to have effects on or 30, 40 years. They're going to have effects on laws that are going to 
change the country, you know, within the decades to come. Mm -hmm. So that might be Trump's lasting legacy is what judge he actually appoints. Yeah, right. that's, why, that's why to a lot of people this this election isn't even about the leaders that you're appointing. It's about what type of ideology do you want in the Supreme Court mm -hmm. for when those new cases come, you know, stuff that like, you know, gay marriage and, and yeah, stuff like right, that. Right. It's stuff that has been affected by who you have on the court. Mm -hmm. um, what was, yeah, so that might, that, in my opinion, is probably going to be the most effect Trump is going to have. Yeah. Then the rest of it is going to be his vice president. So, uh, who, who actually is his uh, kind of appointed vice president? Mike Pence. Okay. Who's uh, in the Indiana governor right next to me. He, that's the state right next to me. And he's uh, extremely, he's a, he's a deep evangelical, extremely conservative. And uh, he, he shares a few views that I don't agree with, but he's, you know, agree with them or not. He's basically going to be the true president. Okay. <laughs> he, he's actually calling the shots, huh? It's going to be like a worse than a Dick Cheney, George Bush scenario. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be like Tr Pence is basically running and calling all the shots while Trump will kind of just sit there and... And look important. Huh? Yeah, look important. And if, if somebody says something he doesn't like, he'll he'll call them out because he's a guy who says it like it is. Yeah. And, yeah. It's it's really bizarre when you think that this is... Um, I, go, I speak to quite a few Americans about this because it's a, it's a fun trigger, like politically. And um, whenever you bring it up, it's the first election uh, that I've, I've, I've ever lived through where no one was actually proud to support anyone. Not before with Obama, for example, people were really excited about this. Um, vice versa, even yeah, Gore, everyone else, even Bush. Like, I was young enough to, I was old enough to remember that um, when, uh, when that was actually coming around. And people were actually really proud on both sides. No one is proud. On, like, I haven't spoken to a single person who's actually proudly supporting either candidate, which is really bizarre. Well, I'm sure Cody probably... Yeah, has for, for sure. People I just, I just mean in generally, America but, who oh, are man. actually proud of... Uh, well, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe proud's the wrong word, but like excite, excited, yes. you know. I, I'm not even joking. The only people I've met who are proudly supporting Trump or Clinton are, is on the internet. I don't know anybody who <laughs> actually is like... Yeah, Trump had, I mean, like, some people are like, Trump has some good ideas and stuff, but everyone basically agrees both candidates are extremely fucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, <that's>, <laughs> yeah that's sure. at least in a way that they can support a little bit. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, it's just like choosing the lesser of two evils, essentially. How, how fucked do you want to be? Like, if you, if you don't want to be too fucked, go for the other guy, basically. Like, yeah, sure. It's, it's so weird looking back on the 2012 election. I mean, no matter what your opinion on Obama or Romney, like they were pretty damn similar in yeah. in just their mentality and and stuff. Like I, I served on the uh, Obama campaign in 2012. I was a senior, and basically that was the like oh, hating yeah. liberal days. Okay. But back then, it was like Romney was seen as like the worst guy. He was like he was going to ruin America. Uh -huh. And and looking back, it's like. He was like a bill. Yeah, he was like rich, but he wasn't like. He never said anything like that offensive. He he wasn't. He certainly wasn't that openly controversial for sure. Like wasn't yeah. he, he even had um his his bill. He had a health care called Romney Care. That was what Obama yeah, based right. Obamacare off of. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? That I didn't know that. That's that's what he based Obamacare off of. Yeah, and wow. and so the only debates they even had were about whether you should have health care be nationwide or have it be a state issue, and so. Going four years just in the future, now we have debates about whether we should deport Muslims. Or <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> like, it's crazy the, just how much it's changed in just that little bit of span of time. It's nuts. Um, well, I, I, but you, you'd have to assume, like, normally the, the candidates that turn up, they're usually there for a reason. They're, like, they're like often an expression of some sentiment that the public have. So I, I wonder what it was that... Uh, that tipped it like so radically in such a short space of time. ISIS. You reckon? It, it was. I think it was ISIS and mm -hmm. um, the whole refugee thing. Oh uh, yeah, refugee right. issue in, in, in Europe. So basically, be because of all of that, Americans, you know, because the, the refugee issue and, and ISIS are definitely problems. You know, they're definitely significant issues. But um, because of that, because that becomes such a, a problem in the last four years. 
Um, it's this reactionary movement to that. And especially a reactionary movement to, you know, extreme political correctness and stuff, um, which I disagree with the liberals on a lot, but that it's, it's a whole reactionary process to a whole culture shift. If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. So are you uh, planning any future videos um, about uh, these subjects? Because normally you often make videos about uh, alter alternate history, yeah. things that have already happened. But are you planning um, to make videos about things that could possibly happen? Yeah, like regarding the, current the events? Knowledge Hub channel or something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's always been... It's always been kind of a, a rule I've had that I, will, I would never try to... Um, predict stuff in videos in the <laughs> yeah. because um i there's these these brand of videos online that they always try to predict how the world will look in like a hundred years or in 50 years and mm -hmm. it's hilarious just even looking back five years from then oh i know right you just see this mentality of how people from like 2008 would think the future is yeah. and <laughs> like it, it becomes extremely dated really fast mm -hmm. so i've i've never really wanted to predict stuff because eventually it's going to get proven wrong so it, it has a time date um but i do i do actually have um if uh i do actually have a videos planned for immediately after election day mm -hmm. for who wins the presidency and i'm gonna have it's either gonna be what if donald trump was elected president and that's <laughs> and it's gonna be what if hillary was elected president nice. And that's it, Donald one. And then the video is only going to be 15 seconds long. And I said, it's only, it's, I, and I just say, it's only been a day. And I just end the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know if you should have put the punchline out, but it's out now. But yeah, for sure, that's awesome. I like that. I like that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that, that, that's my, my secret plan. Yeah. <laughs> it's not so secret anymore. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, Since I, since I already ripped on Trump, Hillary, Hillary. Yeah, I think Hillary's done. Yeah, for sure. Now it's time for me to rip on Hillary. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I think Hillary is basically just a representation of the oligarchy that has kind of constrained America in the last few decades. Mm -hmm. You know, Clinton's Clinton, Bush, Bush. Then Obama's like the only president that hasn't been a Clinton or Bush in that, the last. That in itself is is pretty fucking scary when you see the same name cropping up again and again. Like that is bizarre. Like that in a, in a country of hundreds of million, you know, hundreds of millions of people. Essentially, that's pretty weird when the essentially just family lines or, or marital lines keep cropping up as presidents. That's that's fairly strange. Yeah, it's it's, it's funny because our our nation was supposedly was you know founded on getting rid of monarchies and getting rid of this whole European dynasty mm -hmm. sort of thing. Sorry and then that. just a few centuries later, you know, not to offend mm -hmm. European <laughs> dynasties or whatever, but um, yeah. And so now we're, we're just basically having our own version of dynasties and mm -hmm. nobody really seems to mind except for, you know, a few, a few people on the internet, mm -hmm. which is, which is <laughs> yeah. Well, presumably a lot, a lot of people mind about this, but it's just, again, if, if you're, you, I guess, The, the only the, one of the massive drawbacks about democracy seems like that you're you're marginalized so you can only I, i'm not ripping on it at all it's fucking great it's the best thing since sliced bread pretty much it's better than pretty much any other model we've tried but you get marginalized to the point where if you can only decide if you don't hold referendums for example and to me referendum is a bit of a sore word since uh, recent uk politics but uh if, if you don't hold referendums uh essentially you, the only time you get to decide is every few years when you vote someone in so you essentially have to decide between A or B, and that's all of their policies, everything. It seems very bizarre that that's that's um, uh, that essentially you can just tick two boxes, and that's deciding the entire fate of uh, of politics. It's a fairly strange idea. It is weird. Like a lot of a lot of American democracy, how it's set up, um, it, it's kind of purposely designed so most people don't have a choice, and. Mm. The reason that is, I mean, even hell, look at the Electoral College and all that. It's because the founders originally just didn't trust the U.S. masses, and they didn't think that they could actually make good choices for themselves. So this wasn't until, like, a hundred years ago when people could truly actually, like, vote for their own presidential candidate. Because it used to just be the party would vote for it, and then uh, the people just kind of got two choices, and they're like, hey, this guy seems good. Well, now, now it's a bit better than that, but it's still lot of um it's whoever the party wants and so it's it's not it's not very democratic at all because we only get we, we do only get two choices 
it's really sad. It's always going to be like this. You know, that's just how the system is built. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, but it's, it is hard to imagine. Like, it's easy to rip on, but it is hard to imagine how else you... Obviously, there are things like proportional represent. Do they do this in the Netherlands? Do they have like proportional representation where you, uh, when you, the parties that get into parliament are proportional to how many people voted for them? So you wouldn't just get like one party in power. You have like lots of people representing who voted. Do you yeah. do that, or is it just like one party that, like Germany, do this? For example, is it the same as Germany? Or? Uh, no, God, oh. <laughs> now I have to think about the, the, <laughs> something I've been avoiding the last few months, uh, oh, right. reading politics. on anything politics. Because as soon as uh, the Brexit referendum, yeah, sorry, well, you know, people, uh, certain politicians in the Netherlands, really radical. Uh, Wilders, for example, he's yeah. uh, shouting about uh, having a, our own referendum, yeah. our next it. Yeah, the next it. The next <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, um, we have a, a system um, where um, you have to get the majority. Yeah, sure. Uh, so you have a, a bunch of different parties who are going to discuss uh, and see mm-hmm. if they can... Um, what, form uh, a coalition, isn't it? Yeah, coalition. Okay. Uh, and, which often, you know, takes a... Some people have to drop some of their uh, pain and, um, you know, see if they can come to agreement. And if they can get the majority in the chamber, okay. then they can form the government. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah, it has been very uh, difficult in the past. For example, Wilders uh, has been, um, they've been, uh, for a couple of years, uh, they were able to uh, form a coalition. But the when they actually became a government, there were so many problems that in the end, you know, the um, the government had to be uh, re-elected again really? because uh, eventually you get a new election. And I think we had with Balkanda, uh, okay. one of our lot, we currently have Rutte, uh-huh. but before uh, him, before that prime minister, we had Balkanda, and I think he, he, ha- he was in the government five times. Mm. So uh, every time the re-elected or there, w- there was this vote of what did you vote call? of I think that's what you're talking about yeah. it's, it's, Cody is that right vote of no confidence is that what you call that yeah yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. and then they he had to be re-elected I mean I think the first couple of times it was actually past the term so there was a natural um, you know a new election yeah but the last couple of times uh, you know shit just went down and, and <laughs> shit just went down yeah, yeah it's, it's I've been avoiding I know more about British politics than about Dutch politics because yeah, sure. it's just yeah and... yeah I, I don't want to know much about British politics to be honest but yeah but again <laughs> we, we probably know more about American politics than than either of our own countries combined I expect like well actually all I know about the American politics is that the Clintons love balloons so um, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been avoiding politics for the last two years in general because yeah. I don't know except for the things on Reddit you see on top you know yeah for sure well, I, I was going to mention just while I think about it. The um... this is also why I've been silent for half an hour. Like politics, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, <laughs> I've seen the balloon memes. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I was I was going to make a bit of a shout out to um, uh, again to something I've been listening to recently. I don't know if either of you follow this. There's a a podcast called More Perfect, which is a um, a podcast about the Supreme Court. And uh, I didn't know anything about the Supreme. I just mentioned this because you, you said uh, we were talking about it earlier. Um, I didn't know anything about the Supreme Court before I started listening to this, and I had no interest in it, but I've become fucking obsessed. And, um, uh, yeah, if, if anyone has any interest in um, essentially, like, American legislation or anything like that. But uh, the, the one that got me was that there was a... Uh, uh, where it all started, the Supreme Court didn't really have much power. And then there was a, a case that... Again, I can't remember the specifics of when it was, but there was a case that came up where... For some reason, I think uh, predominantly black states had less um, less weight when it came to elections for some reason. I think because they were less populated. I think that was the reason. And the Supreme Court, it got to the Supreme Court and they had to decide whether they would change how representation works or whether they would leave it the same. And they had to decide whether they had the power to do that. And it was a split. I think there were, f- I don't know if there are still five uh, judges on the Supreme Court now or how that works. I don't know. But at the time there were five, I think. And two, two were one way and two were the other. And uh, the one that was in the middle um, went mad because he realized that whatever he did, if, uh, if he didn't do it, he might damn democracy. If he did do it, he was going to give the Supreme Court the power to step in on um, enormous issues like that. And as a result, he, he uh, dropped out. 
Um, and uh, I think he ended up in a mental institution for a bit, maybe. And someone else stepped in and they won. Uh, so basically they decided that um, the Supreme Court could change huge things like that. And what happened as a result was, you know, 100 years later or whenever it was, you get the, the Bush versus Gore thing where the Supreme Court can step in. And it just it blew me away that this was all down to one guy who, who he, he knew exactly what would happen. And he felt the whole weight of history on his shoulders. And uh, this is what sent him mad. But we, we don't really, I think in the same in the Netherlands, we don't really have anything quite like the Supreme Court where you can just step in and make these bizarre, enormous decisions that have massive well, ramifications, you know? Yeah, we have a, you don't have this, huh? No, we first we have uh, the first chamber and the second chamber. Okay. And uh, in the first chamber, there are 150 uh, politicians. Okay. And they debate about uh, things. Yeah. And if they uh, agree on a, on something that should happen, mm-hmm. it goes to the second chamber, yeah. and they have the final uh, call. Yeah. So um, it's possible that the first chamber, um, you know, agrees on something, and then the mm-hmm. second chamber is like, meh, you know. And you know, of course, we have the media and stuff, so okay. people are pressuring, and if they're if it's about something that the whole country really wants to happen, you know, it's less likely to happen. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, we we don't have a monarch or anything anything who can um, In, intervene. Intervene? No, yeah. oh, no. Our king is just uh, there for uh, you know the pictures and. So that that is something America could do with a king. Yeah. That could really. You I know, think. I think uh, we should reinstate a monarchy. Mm-hmm. That'd be that'd be amazing. George Washington. That's what we should have. Should have. That's <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that, I was I was going to ask as well. With the you mentioned um, with. Um, Trump potentially leaving a legacy by putting in a, a very Republican judge. Uh, is it is that how it is now? Is it split? So it's two Democrats and two Republicans, essentially, and then throwing another one in would make five? Or do you know what the... I do not actually know that. Oh, fair, that's okay. I, it's, we're, not, we're not, like, putting you on the spot, like, as Mr. America. But, yeah, sure. I don't, I don't know the exact uh, numbers, yeah. per se, but it's... It's basically replacing. Are you going to replace a conservative judge with a liberal one, or are you going to yeah, right. replace a conservative judge with an uh, even more conservative judge? <laughs> so that's kind of that's kind of the whole, you know, issue here. It's oh, not like it's yeah. going to completely change the country a hundred percent forever and, and stuff like that. But it, it's still, you know, it doesn't. A lot of people are saying like, "Oh, this election doesn't mean anything." Oh, this election is, you know, I'm not going to vote. Who cares? It's like it, it will have significant impact, even if. Trump can't do anything, even if Hillary really yeah, doesn't do sure. anything, it's still going to have some impact. That, that's, that's the even weirder part, that come, uh, come the election, when it's over, you're, you're going to have one of them as a president. And I don't, I don't know what's weirder. Like, it's just, it's just it's <laughs> so strange. strange. Especially, um, we were, I don't know if you know about what's going on with WikiLeaks speaker, but we, we were talking about this the other day when we were sort of trying to work out if uh, we were going to do a podcast together if we both uh, didn't despise each other or whatever and um uh we were chatting about the you know WikiLeaks. julian assange mm-hmm. keeps going on about how he potentially has some really damning stuff on hillary clinton and donald trump as well so it's just the idea that knowing that you could sway an election just by releasing something at exactly the right time uh so for example he talked about donald trump's tax records i think uh, i i does he have those? I don't know. Well, we, we, we don't know. He, the problem is the WikiLeaks are never explicit about what they actually have, but they often hint at things. But I have noticed sometimes they do make threats that they don't always make good on. I don't know why. Um, but they, they mentioned that they had uh, a they, they had a lot of information about Trump's tax re- tax returns. I think that was the issue because he's not reporting them uh, on some of them. And he also uh, they claim they also have a lot of the documents that... Um, Hillary uh, allegedly had like the 30,000 emails or whatever the fuck it was um, that she wasn't uh, she had on her private server you know like this stuff so it seems like he has a lot of dirt on both of them I guess oh, yeah no I wish he releases it soon because that's gonna oh, man, can you imagine like but yeah but it's just it's just if he does imagine uh, for example I think I said one of us said this the other day if Hillary gets indicted um, as a, for example yeah if Hillary got indicted as a result of this you've basically given the election to Trump which is like that's a lot of power to, to have as one one organization that's pretty weird oh yeah it is and that's just the beauty of, or you know curse of having a, a modern internet society is that just you know one person has so much power yeah, or right. organization has so much power to just completely change history if they want to um like even like think about like the invention of twitter completely changed the geopolitics of the middle east because people were easy you know really easy to uh communicate with one another and that eventually spurred the uh arab spring and 
I mean, it wasn't like the invention of Twitter caused the Arab Spring. No, but it certainly helped. Huh? It certainly helped and, and yeah. spurred it. Um, but yeah, with WikiLeak, with WikiLeaks, that's uh, that that's certainly interesting. I hope he actually isn't bluffing. I really hope. Uh, he actually- yeah, well, I I think we'd all kind of lose respect for him a bit if he uh, if he is. But uh, yeah, I also it gets me thinking about um, the transparency thing as well. Like if WikiLeaks is like the prototype for how the net is going to be as as we go on, that's kind of a good thing and a really bad thing as well like if this stuff is just coming out all the time if everything is transparent so t- politicians can get away with less and less that's a amazing and also some really profoundly scary shit because uh, everyone's life essentially will be on um, on trial uh, if this stuff is all just made public permanently if that's the kind of culture we start to live in you know WikiLeaks has also been in some controversies recently yeah, did you read I, upon that? Is this with rela- releasing names of um like high up commanders and stuff who potentially could get killed. Uh, also, uh, recently I read something in the in one of the UK newspapers about um, a lot of female names, for example, have uh, been released okay. uh, due to it. Um, I don't remember this. So. Yeah, we should definitely read up on that yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> before we start talking about it. <laughs> yeah, no, right. I, I just I just realized as well when I was explaining the Dutch system when I mentioned the two, two chambers, I mentioned like we have a first chamber where this and this happened. Yeah. And I actually meant like that. That's actually the second chamber I was referring oh, to. Oh, that's cool. So, I, I think we can... Like, oh, no, I'm going to look dumb. The, 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 whole, <laughs> the whole premise of this podcast is that we're supposed to be slightly drunk, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. Well, I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, me too. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, I should have maybe had a couple of more beers before talking about politics. <laughs> I, imagine, uh, I can't imagine Cody is drinking at 12 in the afternoon, or 1 in the afternoon, or whenever, whenever it is there. So, yeah. Yeah, yep. it's, it's it's two right now, but um, oh, for, uh, that's oh, no that's no excuse. So in, in Britain, we would have been drinking for at least six hours by then. But yeah, for sure. Well, <laughs> I would I would have lost stairs. People would be like, "What are you, an alcoholic?" And I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> I had a there's um a, a friend of a friend came over uh, a guy from the US the other day, and, and we were talking about differences in culture, and he was telling me that bars close like at two or something two in the morning is that right in most in a lot of places i think he may have, he may have been from san diego or something i think but yeah they mostly do they uh wow they, they close it's 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 odd it's really odd the um okay so this is awesome because this is the first time i've actually been able to vocalize my opinion about this <laughs> yes. um so we you know we have a pretty prominent drinking culture in america like a lot of people love to drink like you know party go out to bars and stuff like that um but the funny thing is, is that there's just so sometimes just really weird cultural stigmas surrounding alcohol. Cause in my in my uh, like where I live, I have to drive to um, the grocery store, right, to, oh. to get liquor. And there's just this like room, this separate room for liquor. And when you walk into it, it feels like you're like buying a dirty like, magazine. Yeah, yeah, you're buying porn. Huh? Yeah, looking sure, at yeah. or looking at like uh, adult dirty mags, yeah. and you're just like, okay, well, I'm just going to take this bottle of Captain Morgan, <laughs> and then I'm just going to yeah. purchase it. And then they they take it and they put it in like a brown bag so uh, nobody sees it. And then you just feel like, oh, well, apparently this is a, a bad thing. So it, it's it's it, it's funny for me that we have a society that already is pretty much accepted you know alcohol alcohol is not like some dirty yeah, bad it's not a taboo it's but, not sure. but then you have to put it in like a plastic a, a brown bag and you can't have it like out in public or suddenly it's a bad thing you know this was strange to me also that in america you can't drink until 21 right is that in all states the same or yeah it's it's everywhere and i vouch as just wow. turning 21 oh so, <laughs> sweet <laughs> so um uh, Exerbia, X and I, you know, we obviously, um, we are people who kind of, when it comes to inspiration and working on videos and editing. Where's this going? <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we like to have a drink. And, you, you could say that, yeah. And we I'm, spent the last week drunk, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm also, um, well, I live in the Netherlands and it's, a, it's a, well, we have some kind of herbs sometimes. And well, like basil or uh, what, yeah, what are you getting Yeah, kidding yeah, basil is very good, uh, especially yeah. in soup. Yeah. Um, but in general, um, I some people now use it as a recreation. Um, recre- oh, I'm my Dutch. Yeah, That's thing. <laughs> and uh, um, I'm actually someone who um, often uses it for my creative flow. So um, I was just wondering if you, uh, when it comes to making your videos and editing them, do you like to have a drink uh, before or? Do you have anything else? Oh, yeah, like that... a creative process. Huh? Yeah. What's yeah. your creative process? Do uh... you smoke crack? <laughs> 
Yes, on the crack, but on the yeah. real level, <laughs> I considering I've only been 21 for like you know two weeks. Oh, so. oh, so, <laughs> sweet. oh so now we can teach him the the, the ways. ways. <laughs> my my fridge actually has alcohol in it for the first time. I can drink it over nice. once, so that's that's odd. Uh, Don't uh, worry, it, the, the novelty never wears off. I promise. Uh, so you, you weren't one of those sneaky uh, teens who um you know would get a bottle somewhere from a someone's sister or brother. Um, not. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't like, I never actually drank in high school ever. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until, um, I moved, uh, next to my friends because my friends live in like the same apartment complex as as me and they're older than me. So they would always get the alcohol when, and I would always, you know, drink it. This was like when I was 19, whatever. But, uh, that was like the earliest I I started drinking, but going back to, to working and, and drinking my, my work schedule, I always, I'm working from like eight in the morning until, you know, like eight at night. And so, uh, having, just kind of having a drink in the morning and during the afternoon has a little bit of a stigma here. (laughs) Or maybe you have coffee. I mean, we've had a lot of early morning conversations right before we started to edit our videos and we're like, coffee, coffee, coffee. Yeah, for sure. My my, my girlfriend loves coffee, so she would probably love both of you. But, um, (laughs) I drink a ridiculous amount of of coke zero and so this isn't supposed to be a product placement but i just i drink so much pop and um i'm fit too so don't think i'm i'm some fact <laughs> but um i after after drinking every like just one pop i go on to the next one and I go on to the next one because if i have a caffeine if i have a caffeine crash i just can't do anything oh, oh, yeah right it's horrible it's throughout true. the day i am just constantly drinking pop yeah. and it helps i mean it helps with the production schedule but um, we should maybe ask if they can sponsor this podcast. You know, since <laughs> he's, uh, he's uh, name yeah. dropping and <laughs> yum, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> welcome to Alternate History Hub, yeah, yeah. sponsored by Coke Zero. Yeah, for sure. Favorite drink of Cody from Alternate History Hub. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't actually like drink. I, I love rum. I love rum. Yeah, I usually don't drink it until the the sun goes down. That way, I don't I don't feel bad about it. Yeah, sure. But uh, then once once I do, then that's when the rum comes out. And usually, I'm not working on anything though. So oh for, yeah, I've I, to be honest with with videos and stuff, I couldn't uh, I couldn't do it how much like I couldn't do it drunk. There's too I don't know about you, but there's like there's too much going on to. Oh man, it'd just be a fucking disaster. Like, it well, already is, but yeah. I have a couple of videos that I made while high as a kite. Nice. And um, yeah, for me, it also depends on the. A lot of people, there's. Especially when it comes to foreigners, a lot of stigma around weed, and a lot of people think, you know, there's one sort of weed and it makes you crazy or sleepy. Yeah, yeah. And there are actually a whole bunch of different yeah, ones. Sure. And I've experienced with. Um, ex- experimented with a couple of uh, different types. And uh, for the creational process, because I read a lot about um, process, and uh, I read a lot about it, and some make me sleepy and don't influence me at all. But there's a particular one called uh, Amnesia, and uh, that's uh, yeah, it's that's, my uh, go-to. Yeah, uh, it's the most expensive one, also, unfortunately. Yes. And I never use it for anything else, but um, you know, the creative moments. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yes. but you, you said you were fit too, and you I assume you work out. Yeah, I I, I work out. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, work out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I'm asking because I wonder, you know, when you think about uh, upcoming videos and things, I know uh, what you, with X, for example, that you often go running and then uh-huh. you come back with ideas. And, yeah, sure. And uh, do you, when do you often um, think about what to work next? Yeah, on? that that is a good question, actually. Yeah. Like, where, where do, because a lot of your stuff is really varied. Where, like, where does that turn up? Do you go for a long walk or what, what are you doing? Do you have something specific that you know that if you're going to do that, you often come back with, uh, you know the next thing yeah um a lot of it's pretty much if i if i watch something online if i see like uh, a netflix thing if somebody brings up a, a sort of topic i think damn i really want to look into this now i really want to like I, it, it's usually geography regions so if i'm if i think i really want to talk about japan or i want to talk about thailand or or something about some sort of region of the world i I just look up historical events that happened in that area and I sort of craft a scenario from there. So for example, um, I really feel like talking about Russia for yeah. some reason yeah. right now. And so <laughs> I am making a video about if the Russian empire never existed. And 
that was basically a spur of the moment thing. They're gonna block it in Russia. <laughs> and I felt like talking about that part of the world, and it's just that's it, it's it's weird how a lot of those ideas just pop up just yeah, because I, I love geography. I love talking about different countries, so most of the history comes from just talking about that. What well, what well, it originally stems from geography, you reckon? Um, I like. Uh, I love maps. I just love maps. <laughs> okay. I just love maps. I love maps. them. Yeah. <laughs> They're great. But, um, yeah, so just, just how different countries are shaped and how different countries, you know, came to be pretty much. Uh, there's a bunch of his. There's just so much history with that. And that's kind of what spurred me to go into alternate history because mm-hmm. when you do alternate history, you get to draw a lot of maps, and that's really fun. Do you collect maps also? Yeah, well, I, I I collect some maps. Um, I collect a lot of flags too. I love flag. I love flags even more than maps, actually. And so I have probably like twenty flags. Nice. <laughs> a lot of uh, vexologists are probably like, "Oh, that's not a lot of flags." But <laughs> I, yeah, I just yeah. started my collection like two months ago. But <laughs> since you're turned twenty one, or <laughs> <laughs> one fact about America, you can't buy flags until you're twenty one. So what the fuck is Wait. that? Is that are you being serious? That's a joke. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ. Like, okay, so you're, you're 21 now, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm 21 now. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Well, it's the same as us turning 18, essentially, but except uh, he's been able to buy guns for... <laughs> can you buy guns at 18? Is that right? Um, or is that 21? You can buy different types of guns. When you're At least, it varies by state. So in Ohio, mm-hmm. um, when you turn 18, you can buy uh, rifles, shotguns, uh, basically anything that's not a pistol. And once you turn 21, that's when you can buy handguns. Oh, oh so wait, hang on. That seems really... Did I understand that right? That seems really backwards. Then you then you can buy handguns. There's this whole stigma with assault rifles and, and stuff. Um, assault rifles aren't actually... Assault rifles can kill a lot of people very fast. You know, don't get me wrong. That, you know, mass murders, that's usually the yeah. weapon of stuff. But you can't conceal them, right? Most of the gun violence that occurs in America is from just pistols. Okay. Because okay. while pistols are, you know, they don't seem as dangerous um, as assault weapons uh they are a lot more easy to bring into any situation and can and you know can easily end a life yeah, just like that you know sure. so the mentality and i i agree with this mentality is that it you have to be a lot older and a lot more mentally stable to own a pistol because since it's so easy to use it requires a lot more of uh maturity yeah sure an assault weapon, yeah, they, they look dangerous, and they can they can certainly be dangerous. You can't just bring one into on the street. You can't just carry one on the street. Uh, a what you know, a concealed carry, you can. not Yeah, a pistol, you just keep in your in your handbag or in your pocket, I guess, or, or um, holstered, or yeah, sure. Man, it's it's been really interesting to follow, uh, especially after like recent um, recent shit that went down, uh, obviously in the U.S. recent shootings and stuff. Um, it's been interesting to follow because I I follow a bit of uh, British media and uh, obviously follow American media and stuff and the, the argument is just so different um, depending on where, where you're looking uh, obviously because we, we don't really have a history of um, uh, privately owning guns not not really except for farmers and stuff like this um, so it's been really bizarre to see how it, like I, I don't know how you felt about the um, I think Obama recently spoke out against assault rifles for example um, but I suppose you've it sounds like you're saying that actually pistols are considerably more dangerous in a way, but handguns, sorry, because because the concealment. Yeah. So okay. So this is this is kind of going to be where we we disagree a little bit on stuff. Oh, I don't. To be honest, I don't. I don't really have a. Again, I don't think either, either of us on this side have a particular ideology about this. I just mean like culturally. I can. I just noticed that the UK, for example, like Europe generally, we, you know, we're pretty like we don't have any great great passion for owning guns. I just mean, but I I don't really give a shit either way. Yeah. Okay. So um, in America. Um, the, a lot of the mentality is because, um, one, with with the Second Amendment, that was kind of included. Just, it was just included in that. But since the United States is so big, it's so wide open, there are a lot of rural areas. There are a lot of areas that um, it, it takes 5, 10, 15 minutes to, to get to, even if you, know, you call the police or whatever. So... Um, when you go so far out into the country, it it has a feeling of isolation and that if something goes wrong, you need something to protect yourself, you know, just like that. Mm-hmm. And calling the cops usually does not work out. So most gun owners 
uh, usually live, you know, most, most people that live in rural areas uh, own a gun because if, you know, there is a home invasion or if there is something, uh, you can at least protect yourself, which rarely there are home invasions. You know, rarely there are actual break-ins or robbers or anything like that. But it's, it's kind of seen as uh, owning a fire hydrant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So it's a utility rather than a weapon. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. I can also imagine in a country, you know, as America, that's that big. You know, I live in the islands, and we have so many people in such a small area. Yeah. So, uh, like, no one's that isolated. I mean, yeah, well, indeed, not that but many it, people it, that isolated. Yeah, I can imagine if I live in a country where. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's, that that is want... a good argument. I never thought about it like that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To put it in perspective, uh, my grandma lives around two hours away from me. And she just lives in the next state over. She lives in Indiana. So the, and to drive that distance, that's like, I'm I'm guessing that is pretty much a considerable distance in in Europe to drive two hours, like to where you, but in the U S that's like barely anything. Like most people, some people commute like 40 minutes, 50 minutes just to get to a place because the country's just so wide open because of the spread of urbanization. Yeah. So in the U S um, Guns aren't really seen as dangerous weapons. Um, they're, they're certainly dangerous, but they're seen as the equivalent of having a med kit. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's, it's just something that you would have if you're prepared for it. And then in terms of, in terms of uh, assault rifles and stuff, assault rifles aren't actually any different than really a normal rifle. They look more dangerous because they have stocks and stuff and they can fire off you know considerable larger bullets but um they are not automatic we don't have automatic weapons actually in the the u.s you don't as in you can't just go and uh, get hold of this no well the difference between i mean you do know you know the the difference between semi-auto and automatic not that clearly to be honest no i just assumed it was uh it was like the the nature of how you reload i thought that was kind of what it's down to isn't it Say you have a, a standard rifle, right? A semi-automatic rifle is a rifle that you have a magazine and you can fire it as qu- as fast as you can pull the trigger. Uh, so it's one shot for every time that you, you push down on the trigger. Mm-hmm. An automatic weapon is a gun that you can just hold down the trigger consider uh, It's just a stream of, of uh, rounds. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's this confusion between what a lot of people think that an assault weapon is an automatic weapon. To, to, to be honest, mm-hmm. until, literally up until the point when you said that, that's what I assumed, yeah. Yeah, so so that's not the case at all. As, what people think are assault weapons are just standard semi-auto weapons that just look scary. They're actually not that different from your average rifle. It's just they're made to look like military weapons because that act, it's kind of like how you would buy a, a, a neat car or you would buy a doll or something like that. A lot of people buy these guns because they basically just look cool and they look scary to a lot of people, but they're not actually that more dangerous. You know, having a different stock or having a different uh, grip that doesn't actually change the performance of the gun that just makes it look cooler to the, to the person. So um, assault weapons, if say, if we're talking in terms of, of mass shootings, Assault weapons are much more dangerous than a pistol. You know, if, if, if you're firing on a crowd, as we've seen would happen in Orlando and with Sandy Hook and all that, then yes, assault, uh, assault rifles are certainly more dangerous. But they're a lot less... If, if you look at the statistics, they are hardly used in gun violence. Hardly. Wow, okay. Most assault rifles are used for target practice. They're used for marksmanship. Yeah. Because, and I can, I can say this as somebody living in Ohio, there's a very prominent gun culture of just firing guns for fun. And I do this all the time. Oh, Matt, I, I, I'd do that shit if, uh, if it was more readily available uh, back in the UK. For I'd love to do that shit, yeah. Uh, I've never really actually used a real gun, but I've used uh, the airsoft uh, guns, yeah. which were... Um, I think at that point, I'm not sure if they're still illegal in the Netherlands, but at that point they were. So I went to Belgium to yeah. uh, actually have a team and we would, you know, um, actually fight each other. And uh-huh. that was so cool. And yeah. I can imagine the thrill of it. It's, it's great. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like in America, a nice idea of a weekend uh, is, you know, go out to the country, go to friends' property, 
fire some guns, Shoot everyone some brings stuff. their guns, you just, you just fire at targets, and it's basically a fun old time. You don't, um, like, you don't actually plan on killing, there, there's no mentality of, you know. <laughs> You're right. That's, okay, we'll, we'll have dinner at six, and uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll shoot all the terrorists at seven. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, for sure. There's no mentality of, you know, oh, I'm going to go and mow down a bunch of people with this gun. It's, it, it, a lot of it's for fun. And um, a lot of it is for sort of, uh, what's the word? Well, it's recreational. Training your skill as a marksman. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Because that's, that's a kind of a valued skill here in America. Yeah. Is how to shoot a gun. But uh, yeah, so while, while assault rifles seem more deadly, you can't actually, a lot of, there's, they, they don't actually contribute that much to gun deaths because you can't carry them anywhere. They're bulky. Yeah, okay. They're huge, and you never see people firing in the streets, you know, so, firing so, each other with assault weapons. So, but so, pistols, pistols are contribute to way more deaths because everyone can own a pistol. And I'm not saying this doesn't mean ban guns or anything. I don't believe in banning guns; it's all economic stuff. But uh, the reason why pistols kill so many is because you know they're more easy to smuggle, sure. they're more easy to carry, and they're relatively easy to use. So that's why so many more people you there's so many more pistol deaths is because of that. But but come coming at this uh, as a complete European idiot and again like I said without an ideology I don't think either of us really feel swayed on either side of the debate. But coming at this as an idiot just purely like sucking in US media. Um I I feel maybe I'm wrong on this. I feel like the last few reported big shootings um, as well with the there was like the Batman screening like in the cinema where a guy mowed down a load of people and a few others they, even they, more recent when yeah, the, the 50, 50 or 60 people were killed in that nightclub well that's the Orlando thing I think oh, Cody's, yeah. Cody's talking about right mm -hmm. yeah and with, with, with that like they weren't they often reported that people were using assault so for that reason why, well, how come they were using assault rifles rather than um, some, is it just because they it's just easier to kill a lot more people in, in one uh, space or what yeah, much. Um, assault weapons uh, can easily, you know, they, they can easily kill a lot more people in a, a quick amount of time. Like, there's no arguing that. Um, but the, at least, at least from my opinion, the, it's not, it's not the tool, the reason for the tool. It's, it's what caused the yeah, reason. Sure. So for you know Orlando at least, um, you know there he was. It, it was basically Islamic terrorism, so that was an issue in itself. Yeah, right. um, for Sandy, uh, Sandy Hook was an issue because that was terrible. Like the, the mother basically allowed this kid who was extremely mentally unstable to have an assault weapon, to have a gun, and he went out and did this. And so, a, a lot of it is just—it's like any tool. If you're irresponsible with it, it's it's going to hurt a lot of people. Definitely, yeah. I mean, just like what happened in Paris, a, a normal truck. Yeah, right. If you want to kill people, you will find You'll a way. You'll find a way to do it, yeah. A lot of, a lot of at least my mentality is, it, is, is that getting rid of the, the tool isn't going to, to stop it because anyone can use a pistol, anyone can use any other <laughs> yeah, kind of right. thing. What needs to be looked at is what is the mentality of... What that's actually causing this, yeah. Yeah, which, in my opinion at least, I think a lot of it is media-driven. And I think a lot of it is these sensational stories of crazed mass murderers going out and racking up these huge body counts, and then suddenly they have their face sprayed on a wall. Yeah, well, that, yeah. do you know the, um, like, uh, Sarah actually gone? Yeah. No, I was just wondering, you know, if, if the media would stop... Um, well, glorifying these people. Yeah, well, not, not glorifying, glorifying, but you're turning them into also... Like, yeah, giving so much fame, information about yeah. these people. I wonder if the attacks would stop at that point. But then again, you also have to... The media would also be, um, how do you call that? Like restricted? Yeah, restricted. kind of? Yeah, you yeah. have the problem with that. Definitely, yeah. Censorship, that was the word I was looking for. Mm. I think a lot of it is, you can't have the government restrict the, the media, at least. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah for you don't sure. want that. Yeah, we, if, yeah. The media has to regulate themselves and have their own discretion about if they're going to show and sensationalize these images, mm -hmm. which sadly, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't do because mass murders... You know, they boost ratings. They boost revenue. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And it, it's not a lie to say that these murders actually, you know, generate more buzz for media. 
Um, but uh, where was I going with this? I was, <laughs> what was what yeah. I going to say? Oh, um, the, that's why I, that's at least in my opinion, why I believe there's so many more mass murders now is because the, these people are basically infamous. You know, mm-hmm. it, at least in America, we know who the Columbine shooters are. Yeah, right. And we know who um, the guy who killed all those people in Aurora is. And without them doing these despicable acts, sadly, they never would have been remembered. Yeah, well, the, the one that sticks with me is the um, kind of to break the rule we were just talking about, but to mention his name, like Elliot, I think his name is Elliot Rogers, Elliot Roger, um, the guy who, I don't know if you followed this, he was the, I think he was the son of a um, fairly well-known movie director or something, I don't know, somehow associated with film. Do you know about this one? Um, you, you have to tell me more. Okay, yeah, but this kid had a YouTube channel where he was... Um, uh, uploading quite a few videos about how you can go and watch that's the sinister part uh, mm-hmm. videos where he was uploading about how he was feeling quite rejected by chicks by girls um, and uh, didn't he shoot seven women Is this yeah yeah oh. the, uh, he, so it was getting he... worse and worse and um, it was quite disturbing to watch and if you actually see it you can see where the trend is going but he just looks like another sort of sinister kid on the internet you know any, a lot of kids I guess do this but he felt really rejected by women and then he just walks into a I think he walked into maybe his school or college or something. Can't remember the details, but shot a lot of people up. And then uh, I think either took his own life or was shot by the police or something. But that's the weird part about living like in the internet age is like I, I intentionally, when I saw these videos were online, I intentionally, in the news report, I intentionally went back and watched the, mm-hmm. all of the videos of his I could find because it was just so like, it's so all like, the, um, recent shootings, like, when they had the live threats on Reddit, you know? I remember oh, yeah, actively yeah. we were both reading that and yeah, sure. catching up with it. And Definitely, yeah. You want you want to know what's going down. It's almost like a. It's not pleasurable, but it's like no. it's exciting, and you you want to know what's going to happen. So it's like titillating, you know. Yeah. Yeah. In a, in a horrible way. And yeah. Oh, yeah. It's gross. Yeah, for sure. But I just mean it's it's more it's exciting over doing nothing like the you know. Yeah. Well, it was also some of the recent things like um, the things that happened in France. It was very yeah. uh, close nearby for yeah, me, sure. and, I, and I had people, friends in the area. Mm. And uh, you're just constantly, um, you know, keep reading stuff. And one thing that really annoys me about the media these days, and especially YouTube, um, I remember following the live stream on Reddit during one of these events, and then I started to refresh the YouTube search page, um, where I just put in the keywords regarding events. And, you know, within minutes, every time I refreshed it, I saw new videos of, you know, unknown channels um, or very major news sites who are all publishing the same videos or even random videos okay. just to get, you know, uh, up in the search results and, yeah. mo- and get some money from the monetization. Mm-hmm. And um, even another stupid example uh, with that new game, uh, Pokemon, po- Go. Pokemon Go, yeah. a lot of news sites would just um, use any news story if they could, po- could put yeah. Pokemon Go in it. <laughs> Um, uh, people would click it. Yeah, so I, saw, they, I saw this happening with like some YouTube channels I follow, where they're they're like purely about maths and purely about computers and numbers and and computer theory, and they were like <laughs> making completely out of character videos about Pokemon Go. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like you you normally cover like high level mathematics. What are you not high level, but you know you're normally mm-hmm. like math and science. What are you doing? Like just trying to get views. Yeah, it's always. I mean, that, I um, fun fact about me. I when I first started college, I was a journalism major. Oh yeah. I I wanted to go into journalism and go into all this different, you know, write articles and all that fun standard stuff. And after spending just one year, not even in actual journalistic environment, I, I just spent it at my like school paper and uh, with prof- actual professionals from you know the media. I just I just realized that it's such a toxic environment that everyone is basically just trying to to find that that next story, that next historic moment, and. It's it's kind of just a, a culture of capitalizing on tragic events. Definitely, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I couldn't live with that. I couldn't do that, so I, I quit. What do you do now? Um, I'm uh, I'm actually a digital arts major, so that's mm-hmm. the concept art and stuff like that. Oh. Yeah. So it's I, I just I couldn't I couldn't do that, and uh, I, I quit. But um, a lot of a lot. That's what I. That's why I, I see all these. Um, these these new shootings and all these these news reports is because people just want to be famous now. Yeah, right. At, at any cost. Yeah. And this is just a really like fucked up new trend. <laughs> people want to be the next Aurora shooter. They want to be the next Orlando shooter. They 
like and it, it, it's truly scary how you can just go out and shoot a bunch of people and you'll be famous yeah, sure. that, that was a recent youtube what was her name again marina joyce Is yeah she uh, are you aware of the the story behind this cody yeah, she was the was she the one who was shot? Oh no, that's uh, I know what you mean. I'm I can't, oh um, her name. Um, she's she made music fit. Yeah, um, I can't, yeah, she's I can't a brilliant. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, sure. no, we're talking about a, a YouTuber who uh, had some uh, videos online um, where um, some things were set randomly or. It was, she, it was pretty fucking sinister if you watch her videos. Like, yeah, it was, it was a bit sinister. And uh, her fans at some point start to um, read uh, signs uh, into her video videos. And at one point, uh, we start to uh, get worried about maybe uh, her being abducted and that people were maybe... Like she's being held hostage and yeah, being made to make, make videos. And yeah. she was forced. And these wild theories uh, spread out that maybe ISIS was behind it. And, and, <laughs> and good, she, it? yeah, she was uh, planning to attend an event. And at that point... Well, when, yeah, she made an invitation to attend, yeah, didn't she? Yeah. yeah, she was attending an event, I think, uh, for some reason, and she invited people to come over. And around that time, her um, followers started to get really paranoid and thought something was wrong. So they started to tweet stuff like, uh, don't go to the event, it's maybe Dash related yeah. or whatever. And the news picked it up, and I think she gained like half a million subscribers Yeah, if you, if you look at her videos now, she's got millions of views on all of them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, she already was... She, she was she was big, but I I saw the I was because I was amazed I was amazed how big it how how massive the effect was, and you can see the results. And before she jumped like millions. Yeah, of but years. the thing is, if this happened years ago, the news maybe would have you know dropped it and stuff. But now you know they could have used the word oh terrorist, and they thought yeah. te- they didn't even you know mention. So it's the fact that you mean that they jumped on the terrorist bandwagon to kind of like make out that it might. Yeah, be. And yeah I'm, sure. I'm pretty sure uh, all the news sites made a lot of money with advertisements yeah. uh, on those days and. It's it's hard to imagine though. In this, if you were given the job of trying to get rid of this kind of like insidious culture of just being sensational for getting clicks, it's hard to imagine how you do it without actually without actually stepping in and being um, and, and actually regulating it. And obviously, we don't want that to happen. So it's really hard to imagine how you would change this without being really kind of um, Byzantine about it. Like without you know, I, again, it's like American politics or, or politics in general. There's a lot wrong. But it's almost impossible to imagine how you would change it without being a dictator, without being a fascist and actually stepping in and doing something about it. Just just thinking about the idea, what the hashtag has done to the world. The fact that we have <laughs> yeah. hashtags, you know, on Twitter, yeah. Facebook, whatever. I, don't, I still don't understand how to use these, to be honest. Like, well, I don't really get what they are. But yeah, okay. <laughs> I actually made a hashtag for you when, I'm, when your channel just started to grow. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yeah, just. It's a very quick way to uh, come up with something people can identify okay. with or a certain subject or yeah. whatever. And, um, um, for example, if people tweet about a certain hashtag and more people okay. do it, it all gets compiled. And mm-hmm. that's, you know, when things start to trend, media will notice. And, oh, and then they pick it up. Huh? Yeah. yeah okay. So if you just have enough people come uh, who uh, start trending about a certain subject, mm. uh, you can get you know, noticed. Mm. So you just, I mean, if you want to start an uh, Exerbia cult, you... Uh, Why not? Why not? <laughs> yes, come up with a, with a nice hashtag and uh, maybe we... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, nev- I'll get the candles. <laughs> yes. Ne- nevertheless, um, we're, it's uh, extremely hot here. We haven't managed to source our AC or anything. It's getting to the, the two hour mark or something. So it may be high time to, to begin wrapping this up. But um, mm. we were, we were going to say before we do, like... Uh, can you tell people sort of where to find out um, a bit more about you and just about your channel and stuff and anything you've got coming up, just as a as a little uh, as a little soapbox that you can you can stand on. So you know anything you want to promote, pretty much. Yeah, cool. So um, just in in case nobody uh, uh, saw my I, my my channel is called Alternate History Hub and I make videos about uh, alternate history, basically asking the what if of what if uh, things had gone differently. Uh, on our in our timeline so if uh the axis won world war ii if the south won the civil war and i try to theorize or attempt to theorize about how things would have gone differently and how society would have changed so um i'm going i'm doing my whole alternate history of boys now damn <laughs> <laughs> i did i didn't wonder about that before i, I asked you um is that his real voice or does he act you know when he starts no, making a video yeah. goes a bit lower and talks a bit more like this because you know for some of my videos that sometimes need to you know make a certain voice and i think you sometimes you know, have that oh, too maybe, but, no, i think it's yeah it's 
It's Cody's voice for sure. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> do, do carry Go on. on. It, it's when I'm, when I'm focused. It's like sometimes <laughs> my voice just like gets deeper for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my my uh, my next video is hopefully going to be what if the Russian Empire never existed. Awesome. Uh, I have a whole lot more uh, great content hopefully coming up. Uh, new videos are every week, so uh-huh. check that out. And uh, yeah, you've got the um, you've also got like another channel, Knowledge Hub, right? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I, I have another channel called Knowledge Hub, and it's basically about anything that I want to talk about. So history, geography. Uh, hopefully science in the future mm. and I make weekly educational videos um, about any topic so I have a, uh, a new series about the history of tanks well, so I can say personally I've been watching this it's, uh, yeah, it's awesome for sure oh thanks yeah so actually it's pretty fun every time somebody asks me about altering history of it stuff I always have this blank this I always have like <laughs> same template in my head that I repeat verbatim <laughs> so screw it up <laughs> and, and whenever I get it right, I'm like, yes, nailed it. It's, yeah, it's a, to be fair, though, it's a bit of a fucked up thing to do just to put someone on the spot. Like, hi, could you just sum up your entire creative career of the last four years in two minutes? And if you don't do it properly, we'll hate you. Like, it's a bit weird. So, yeah, I don't, I don't blame you for having it. If you've got a bit of a template, I think that's fair enough. Mm. I, well, I, I don't have a, maybe a final question regarding, um, you know, your creative career. Are there any plans for the future? Um, outside of YouTube, things you want to do uh, or focus on? Um, yeah. You mean like creatively, Germany? Like- well, creatively or could be anything else. Okay. But cr- creatively specifically. <laughs> really, it, it's, uh, I kind of want to just see where, where it takes me. So I've gotten so many opportunity offers just within the last year um, that if I wasn't in college, I would have I would have definitely taken. But um, I, I, I kind of want to just make content right now continue to make content every week and and build up my channel you know reach a million subscribers hopefully by the end of the year and because i actually just reached 800,000 subscribers so. congratulations yeah, awesome thanks so um yeah so hopefully reach a million subscribers and then just see where it takes me uh i like i mean i love i love doing art i love writing uh and so i'm hoping that the channel will give me sort of a leverage above, you know, the competition mm-hmm. or at least, uh, you know, just by itself have other people want to work with me because of what I've done on the channel. Mm-hmm. That's, kind of, that's kind of my hope right now. Uh, I want to just see where it takes me. You know, it's, it's no use worrying about it all because it's kind of, it gets overwhelming <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I can imagine. But, um, yeah, I would just say for, for anyone else listening, like the, the, um, people we were essentially planning to have on, uh, we, we had a bit of a think about obviously it was a pretty big deal having a first episode to us anyway to get it off the ground and we, we had quite a long chat about who we quite a few chats about who we want to mm-hmm. go with and uh, we decided we didn't really want to aim for like traditional celebrities or anything because we weren't very interested in talking to them if they wanted to come on it was really something we were both actually interested in in ourselves and like yeah you're, you're, that's why your channel really came up because we actually liked what you were doing like we were um, pretty amazed that someone was actually doing this. So I, I would say to anyone else that like, this is genuinely good stuff and like we massively recommend. Yeah, for sure, man. Oh, yeah. thank you. Good stuff. That's great to hear. Yeah, not too well. Yeah, we'll, we'll be watching for sure. And like, uh, best of luck with it, really. Thank you. You too. Yeah, man. Cool. Okay. Well, thank it's been you. good to talk, huh? Yeah, it was. All right. In a bit. All right. Cheers for listening. You can find us at halfdrunkradio.com or on Twitter and YouTube. Yes. If you think you know someone working in an interesting field, reach out and we'll see if we can get them on. Unless they're Norwegian. Goodbye.